Hello everyone, how's it going? And welcome to today's Wild Rift video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the five best champions that you can play this patch. I'm going to be showing you one champion from every single role, from Baron Lane down to the support role. And these are the best champions that you can play to climb to the highest rank that you want to achieve in Wild Rift. First up, let's take a look in the Baron Lane. And we have the Defender of Tomorrow, Jace. Now, Jace can not only be played in the Baron lane, he can also be played in the mid lane and the jungle, but I didn't want to skip him out on this top five list. Jace is absolutely crazy. His early game damage, he has six abilities available to him in both range form and melee form at just level three, meaning that he's going to be one of the strongest early game champions in the game. You can either take advantage of his range form in the early game by poking enemy champions out with acceleration gate and shock blast and then afterwards you can jump into melee form do a whole bunch of damage and just burst down the enemy champion super quickly and thanks to his build as well he's also going to scale relatively well into the late game he won't do as much burst damage but he's still going to do enough damage for you to be able to carry your team Ghostblade is the cheapest and strongest item that Jace can get as a first item it gives you a lot of damage but also gives you movement speed to be able to roam around the map Dustblade is a very strong item that gives you a lot of attack damage and also allows Jace's auto attacks to deal with that little bit of extra damage. Serpent's Fang, another really good armor penetration item that you can use when against a lot of shielding. Serrated's Grudge, not only for the slow, but for the percent armor penetration, makes this item very powerful. And Edge of Knight is a bit of a more defensive item. It, you don't get as much attack damage, but you get a little bit of extra health. And also the passive Anulse Shield means that you can block the next hostile ability. And for the runes, we'll be running First Strike as our rune because of our long range and thanks to the Shot Blast Acceleration Gate combo with our range form, we can easily proc First Strike and then change into melee form, jump into melee range and do a lot of burst damage and true damage. And this will also give us a little bit of extra gold to get our item sooner. Then we have runes like Brutal, Coup de Gras, a Legend Alacrity, which can be flexed around, but are very, very powerful runes that you can run to deal more damage to the enemy champions. And Bone Plating is one of the best secondary runes that you can take to just protect yourself against any combo damage that might be coming your way. Moving into the jungle, we have everyone's scariest bug, the Void Reaver Kha'Zix. This champion, for some reason, got an insane buff in the most recent patch. This champion was already one of the strongest junglers in the game. But with the buffs in the most recent patch, he's just become an even stronger assassin that can look to jump around, get resets, find isolated champions, and one-shot them with his high burst damage. In the early game with Kha'Zix, you just want to try and farm and get your first evolve as soon as possible. Then you'll be able to evolve your first ability, which will get on lower cooldown and also deal a lot of single target burst damage. And when you're looking to gank, you're always trying to look for isolated champions or even when you join into teamfights. It's super important for Kha'Zix. He's not going to be able to join teamfights too much and jump into five enemies he has to run around you have to stay in the back line stay stealth and maybe look for flanks and try and find them isolated back line carries because they're the champions that you can jump on and do a lot of damage and potentially even one shot and with the reset with Kha'Zix evolved third ability you can jump in do a lot of damage and then jump away to safety as for the build with Kha'Zix, it's very similar to Jace's build as Kha'Zix again focuses on a lot of burst damage and focuses on a lot of attack damage items that give him a lot of armor penetration. Ghostblade, very cheap first item that you could buy with Kha'Zix, especially as a jungler. It allows him to roam around a lot, lot quicker and gives him that instant buy for a first item. Dustblade with Kha'Zix jumping into me range a lot and with him auto attacking in between his abilities to do that extra bit of damage. Dustblade is going to give you even more damage on top of that, making it very difficult for enemies to try and defend against. Serpent's Fang, a very good flexible AD item that you can build when against any shielding. Serrated's Grudge for the extra slow when you're landing your second ability or even when you're landing your first ability as well. This can be great when against champions that have a lot of mobility. And Edge of Knight being a more defensive 
defensive item. But since Karzix is going to be jumping into melee range a lot, that null passive for the extra shielding means that he's going to be able to block any sort of crowd control that might come his way. As for the runes, first strike, a no-brainer for Karzix. Jumping in with him, especially when in stealth, means that he's going to deal damage before the enemy champions. And he's going to be able to do a lot of burst damage with his abilities and his auto attacks with the true damage from first strike and also get that little bit of extra gold. As for the other rune, Sudden Impact is really easy to proc. We're going to be using our third ability, Leap, to jump into the enemy backline, which is going to give us that bit of extra armor penetration. Empowered Attack not only works on enemy champions, but also works on jungle camps. So this is going to help him clear through that jungle a little bit quicker, but also deal more damage to enemy champions. An Eyeball Collector, not only does this stack on kills, but it also stacks on takedowns, so assists. So as long as you're joining in team fights, as long as you're finding them isolated champions, getting down the takedowns, then you'll get an extra little bit of extra free AD from Eyeball Collector. And for the secondary rune, Overgrowth is one of the strongest runes for junglers, whether you're playing assassins or tanks, because this rune just basically gives you a lot of bunch of free health and percentage health that will allow you to be a little bit more tankier when you get into the mid and the late game. Moving into the mid lane, we have the Crimson Reaper Vladimir. Now, even though Vladimir did get a nerf in the most recent patch, he is still one of the strongest mid lane champions to play. Not only does he do a lot of burst damage, but he's also very slippery, very fast, and very difficult to play against. Now, Vladimir is a scaling champion, so you're going to get that little message at the start of the game that's going to tell you to play safe because you are a late game champion, which is totally acceptable. Vladimir, you're not going to do that much damage in the early game. During the laning phase, all you want to really do is make sure that you use your abilities to heal up, especially your first ability, and just clear as many minions and get as much gold as possible. Then once you get a few items with Vladimir, you can start to roam around and start to make some insane plays around the map with the crazy amount of movement speed that you can get from Cosmic Drive, from Ghost, and from Phase Rush. And speaking of the items and runes, these are the items and runes you want to run on Vladimir. As I just mentioned, Cosmic Drive, a very unique item for Vladimir that will help him a lot when using his abilities. He's going to get that little bit of extra movement speed, making him very difficult to try and lock down. You're going to be able to dodge skill shots a lot easier and also being able to chase down enemy champions to deal that little bit of extra damage. Crown of Shattered Queen, a more defensive item, still gives you a lot of damage, but an extra shielding will help you against crowd control. Death Cap gives you so much ability power that it's pretty much a no-brainer. Rift Maker gives you damage and also survivability with the extra healing. The true damage that you get from Rift Maker, though, is really where this item shines. An Awakened Soul Stealer, I've already mentioned how Vladimir has an insane amount of burst damage. If you're able to kill an enemy champion super quickly, then Awakened Soul Stealer is going to basically reduce all your abilities cooldowns by about 2 to 3 seconds, which means you can then use them again and deal even more damage. For the runes, first up, we have Phase Rush. Again, more movement speed with Cosmic Drive and also with Summoner Ghost, making it very, very nice for Vladimir to roam around during fights. And then we're actually going to go for the inspiration tree. Vladimir doesn't get as much value from the precision tree and the domination tree, the yellow and the red tree as other champions. So the inspiration tree just gives him a lot of great runes that helps him with survivability, cooldown, and also even more movement speeds. Sweet Tooth to give him that little bit of extra money and also healing from the honey fruit, allowing him to stay in lane longer so he can farm up more minions and get more gold. Transcendence cooldown really important for Vladimir so he can use his abilities more often especially his empowered first ability giving him a lot of healing and extra burst damage and Nimbus Cloak when we use our flash and our ghost we're going to get a crazy amount of movement speeds and as for the secondary rune bone plating is your safest option we want that little bit of protection just in case anyone jumps on top of us wants to try and kill us but we do have the sanguine pool as well which is going to help us a lot from any burst damage Moving down into the dual lane, we have the Purifier Lucian. Now, Lucian has fallen out of the meta over the last few patches, but with the recent buffs and also buffs over the past few patches as well, Lucian is becoming stronger and stronger, and he's one of the most played champions right now in China down in the dual lane. Now, Lucian's powers really comes from being able to use his abilities and his passive to his advantage. Whether that's using your first ability to last hit minions, but also try and poke down enemy champions at the same time, or trying to get three auto attacks off in quick succession to be able to proc Kraken Slayer thanks to his passive. 
And with what I just mentioned, with how much power Lucian has in the early game, most of the time you'll get an advantage against most other dual lane carries. That means you'll have an item advantage and also a gold advantage that you can look to try and scale into the late game with Lucian. Now, speaking of the late game, Lucian does fall off in the late game compared to other dual lane carries. But with the power that he has in the early game, you need to try and push this power in the early game so you can stay on par, if not be stronger, than these late game hyper carries that are stro so strong right now in the dual lane. For the items and the runes, we want to be running a lot of attack damage items that gives us a lot of crit. Bloodthirster being still one of the strongest ADC items that you can run. You get a lot of damage from it. You can also get an extra bit of damage and attack speed when you're above 50% health. And also you'll be able to get the healing from the physical vamp, which works really well with Gluttonous Graves. Essence Reaver, again, another really strong item. You do need to be a little bit careful with Essence Reaver because it works as the next ability that you cast is going to do extra damage. But this needs to either be your first ability or your ultimate. If you use and waste your Essence Reaver on your second ability, you're not really going to feel the same power as if you were to use your ultimate on your, or your first ability when Essence Reaver passive comes available. Magnetic Blaster gives Lucian that little bit of attack speed, but only that, it also gives him attack range. Now, Lucian has one of the lowest attack ranges out of any dual lane carry, but thanks to Magnetic Blaster, this will be able to give you extra attack range, meaning that he can auto attack from a distance. It's not going to happen all the time, only every few seconds, but that's, that plus the old static shiv passive means that you can clear waves quicker and also keep a safe distance. More to remind of for the extra damage, the crit, and also the percent armor penetration. And Trinity Force as our final item, giving us a whole bunch of base stats that we really need. For the runes, Kraken Slayer is a no-brainer for Lucian. It's really easy for him to proc Kraken Slayer thanks to his passive. Every single time that he uses his ability, his next auto attack actually happens twice. So he double auto attacks, which means that you only need one more auto attack afterwards to proc the extra damage from Kraken Slayer. And also, the rune also got buffed recently, and it now scales even better into the late game. Brutal for the extra auto attack damage in the early game, which is really nice in combination with how strong Lucian is in the early game with Kraken Slayer. Coup de Gras, really good when champions are super low on health. Legend Bloodline for that extra little bit of healing that Lucian really needs to help with his survivability. Don't play him for the secondary rune. However, this can be swapped out for sudden impact if you want to play more aggressive, especially when you use Lucian's dash to get that extra bit of damage. And last but by no means least, down in the support role, we have the Enlightened One, Karma. Now, Karma defies all limits about supports. Most of the time, when you think of a support, you think of a tank. You think of a champion that has a lot of shielding that can protect your team. But no, Karma is the complete opposite. Karma is a champion that you can carry your games with when playing as a support. She has a crazy amount of burst damage. She has so much mobility and she still has a bit of shielding and crowd control in team fights. But the big power really comes in when she has her empowered version of her abilities. Every single time that you cast three abilities, the next ability afterwards will become empowered, giving your first ability more AoE damage, allowing your second ability to be able to chain onto other multiple enemy champions, and even your third ability being able to shield two allies instead of one. All of these combined with the damage items we'll be going with the build makes Karma extremely powerful and can most of the time actually do the most damage on your team. For the items, we still want to make sure that we go for our support item as we won't be farming in the laning phase. The Relic Shield is the best option. Yes, it doesn't give you any damage, but the extra HP really helps you out. And the Relic Shield being able to proc this during the laning phase when you auto attack minions, really good for when you want to push lanes and go back to base. And also you get the most gold the quickest out of any other support item, thanks to being able to choose what minion you want to last hit with Relic Shield. And after the Relic Shield, we're going to be going for four damage items. Ludens Echo for the crazy amount of ability power and also the extra burst damage you get from the passive. Crown the Shattered Queen and again, another very strong, powerful item that also gives us a shield just in case anyone targets us. Rabadon's Death Cap for the crazy amount of ability power and the percentage ability power added into the late game. 
and Leandri's Tormund, a very good item when playing against any tanks or any bruisers that are building a lot of health. For the runes, first strike, really easy for Karma, especially with her first ability and her ultimate to deal the first instance of damage. This also gives you a lot of free gold and extra damage during the laner phase, especially when you're against melee supports like Brom and Alistar that can't really contest you in the early game. You can walk up, use your abilities for free, and just get that free extra damage and gold from first strike giving you laning priority. Scorch gives us extra poke damage during the laning phase and gives us that little bit of extra damage during the late game. Mark of the Week helps you deal more damage but also helps your allies do more damage as well. This is especially good down in the dual lane because if your dual lane carry follows up on any of your engages, they're going to deal more damage as well as yourself. An Eyeball Collector, being able to collect them kills and assists will be super easy with Karma throughout the game. Her shielding works as a sis if she's able to shield an ally that gets a takedown, which will give her just more AP to deal more damage. And Transcendence gives her a crazy amount of ability haste, so she can use her abilities more often to deal more damage, gain more crowd control, or even shield her allies. And that's it. That's the five best champions that you should be playing right now in wild rift if you feel like there is a champion that maybe i've missed out on or if there's a champion that you think is stronger in a certain lane let me know down in the comments and as always stay safe and i'll see you in the next wilder video peace